Good evening. How is everyone tonight? My name is Hamilton Weaver. I am uh, very excited to have um, some really great industry leaders in Philadelphia on tonight um, discussing, I think, what's on everyone's mind. Um, the shutdown, what happened with COVID-19. Um, as soon as everything shut down, then the PLCB shut down. Um, more WEPs went into play. Um, and uh, of course, there's the existential dread as well. Um, the lawsuits towards the PLCB. Today, I was reading an article about uh, a proposed House bill um, by uh, Senator or uh, State, Represent State Representative Tim O'Neill, um, House Bill 2547, uh, to privatize um, all liquor sales and stores and the like. So um, lots going on this Friday, the 29th. Uh, we also have uh, Governor Wolf has allowed uh, certain counties to go to 55, 50% occupancy um, for dine-in. So there's a lot going on. Um, and uh, I mean, cocktails to go, lots to talk about. So um, thank you all for joining us today, uh, tonight. Um, lots to talk about. Please feel free to jump in and comment. Um, this is a forum uh, we felt like, at least myself and uh, uh, hi, um, where we can get the message out. Things don't have to get watered down like a Zoom meeting, if you will, but it's also permanent. This is something that affects everyone and is really relevant. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and join uh, and join and invite our first guest, Scott, um, and, said, um, and introduce yourself. Uh, tell us, you know, who you are um, and what you do. And also, if you had a soundtrack that was playing in your mind right now or uh, just in the past week, go for it. What would it be? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if the soundtrack would be appropriate for what we're doing right now, um, but I'll just say it would be by this uh, the band The Divinals from the 90s. Okay. Nice. You can look it up and figure out uh, what, <laughs> uh, what's been playing in my head the last week. But uh, hey, buddy, it's good to see you. It's good uh, to see for you. those of you that don't know me, uh, you're all a bunch of jerks, and you should know me anyways. But I'm Scott. I'm the wine director at Del Crisco's here in Philadelphia. Um, do you want me to go through the questions you had, or do you want to ask me? No, like, I'll, I'll go ahead. This and is all very new to me. <laughs> no, absolutely. Hey, I appreciate you making it on here, and uh, all the technology so far is, is working. So um, I'm going to get my Ellen on, as Hi said. I don't have, like, a Carlton okay. dance to go on, but I'll, I'll go ahead and ask some questions. So Del Frisco's um, Big Steakhouse, really well known for uh, both the tourist destination, but also um, really celebratory events. And if you wanted to have a, a phenomenal meal or experience, that's what most people would would go to um, mm -hmm. and now luckily you had the WEP I remember you and I chatting as soon as this happened um, thinking hey what's the next step so you've gone to, to go uh, you've started to clear out your cellar um, and I mean you've gone from tourist business to local business um, how has this affected you guys I'm going to use the dreaded word what's the pivot like <laughs> uh, no, it's obviously it's affected us greatly. Uh, there's only so much capacity we can do in a to-go style business. Um, but like you said, we're being a destination, being a tourist destination, but also like a business meeting kind of restaurant um, without businesses being open, without people meeting, um, without tourism, uh, our to-go businesses sustaining us for the time being, but it's not what we used to be. Um, and obviously being a luxury branded steakhouse, experience uh, for the guests being in here is a huge part of what drives people to Del Frisco's. Um, the restaurant itself, the building, um, the service that we offer, and we can't offer the same thing to go. Right now we went from being luxury experiences to essential food service. And it's a, it's a very different mindset. It's changed our business philosophy completely. Absolutely. I mean, I spent nine months in room service and I was ready to uh, <laughs> off myself after that. It's we are I've seen posts from your, yourself and others saying, you know, we're, we're hospitality, uh, hospitality people. And this is not the easiest for us. We're meant to interact. We're meant to mentor mm -hmm. and, and share experiences with people. So um, I just I love how empty it looks like it's getting behind you. So it's, it's, it's getting there. Yeah, for <laughs> if sure. If I do get back to work, you know, or when I do. Um, Help fill those up. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. And then in terms of sustainability, I, I know it was difficult with the PLCB shutdown to get any product. You guys did have a deep seller, so that helped mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but at this point, you can get more. Is this a sustainable model for you guys? I'm not, I, I mean, business is, is key. It's the, there's a bottom line. Right. And take the wine sales out of it. Uh, the to-go business is not sustainable. I mean, with the size of the restaurant, we have restaurant um, uh, uh, 
commercial uh, rent in Philadelphia yeah. is extremely high. We can't sustain that. No restaurant is going to be able to sustain that just on to goes. Um, as far as wine sales, like it's definitely helped keep us afloat. Uh, it's, you know, we're not doing this necessarily to make money. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously we're you're doing it to make money, but we're maintaining our to-go business to help pay for insurance for our staff of 180 some odd people. We're not a local restaurant, but we still employ 200 local residents, right? So we're doing our best to make sure that uh, the people that are with us and that have been with us for the 11 years we've been open or even a portion of that still have insurance. Now it's an extremely important time to make sure your health insurance is maintained. Um, yeah, yeah, That's uh, huge. When I, saw, when I saw Mitch rent that rent. It's actually not as bad as you would think considering the space. Um, 30, 40 you know, grand? No, you don't have to tell us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, but no, it's, it's not as much as it probably should have been. But, you know, you mentioned, you know, the WET, a WEP, a WEP license is going to be huge moving forward. Um, it's another arm of the octopus that we can use to maintain sales, even when we do open up, hopefully next month, that there will be a large um, portion of our business is still going to be to go. So selling, you know, wine, beer, and now spirits, which is a godsend, um, yeah. is, is going to be huge. Uh, every dollar counts right now. Absolutely. Um, and for those of you who don't know, check out his wine list. Um, in terms of deals, like he said, they're not gouging. Um, there's some killer finds to go. Um, very cool. Well, Scott, um, any other words of wisdom? Um, I know we're kind of rapid firing stuff here and um, I don't want to drag things out or also use you too much. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> any words of wisdom? Um, for the non-restaurant industry people that may eventually watch this, when the restaurants do finally open back up, be nice to us. <laughs> we, we've had the, sh the, the I can't know, we've had the uh, crap beat out of us the last couple of months, um, and we're going to be very happy to welcome you back in the restaurants. But we're going to be we're going to be pretty worn down, so have awesome. a little bit of patience with us too. Yeah, and I, I know we chatted briefly via email about uh, to-go cocktails. Um, and in terms of that, are you guys jumping on that game pretty yeah. hardcore or okay? Yeah, so our VIP, which is our vodka infused with pineapple, it's, uh, it's like a um, clementine infused with uh, pineapples. Um, it's our best seller when we're open. And now that we're – and people have been asking for it the last six weeks. And now that we can sell it, we've uh, – our bar mix has become 30% of our sales in the last wow. four days. So, which is – I mean, all right, we're not doing $100,000 a day in sales, but mm -hmm. it's still uh, – it's every little bit counts. Yeah, you're still down. I think the big message is that this isn't sustainable, but that's awesome to hear that there's a little silver lining there for sure. Yeah, yeah, especially if we talk about privatization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That would be interesting. Go ahead. I mean, jump in. You already – we have a couple minutes for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, one of the issues we have in Pennsylvania is, is the markup here is, is so incredible. Um, you know, and being in that northeast corridor on Amtrak, we get so many – business transient business travelers between, you know, DC and Boston that come into the restaurants. Like your, your, your markup's insane. It's like, no, it's, it's regular industry standard three times markup. It's just what we pay is insane. Um, so it'd be nice to see a little bit of a price break and give an opportunity for the restaurants to, to make a little bit more money. Um, especially right now we're, we're all going to be digging ourselves out of a hole. Um, any advantage we can have to put a couple extra dollars to the bottom line. Absolutely. I remember coming as a, a buyer from California, to, to Pennsylvania, to Philadelphia. And I was like, wait, those aren't by the glass wines anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Well, Scott, thank you so much. Um, always a pleasure. I wish we were face to face. I miss your energy, man. Um, <laughs> we are we'll face to face, soon. just virtually. We are, we are. Um, <laughs> and, and the haircut worked out well for you and myself, did, I did guess. It? <laughs> not, not, not a lot of hair left up there. It, was, it's, it did not take a long uh, time to get cut. So, but Hamilton, thanks for putting this together. It's always good to see you. Pleasure's all mine, man. Okay, and I'm going to try and figure out how to switch things up. And I'm going to try and figure out how to get off of this. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, there we go. I think I got it. And all right. Um, next one on is Chloe. And I see she's here. Give me just one moment as I get everything together. Um, awesome. Hey. Hey. Thank you so much for joining us. So <laughs> I'll ask you uh, the same thing I asked Scott. Um, Please tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and if you had a, a theme song going through your head um, the theme past song, week, huh? yeah, what would it be? Huh. Um, so my name is Chloe Gregory. I am a co-owner of the Good King Tavern and Le Cavo. We open a little wine bar upstairs. Um, yeah, I do, I do all the wine stuff. I kind of do a little bit of everything, honestly. Um, 
but wine is definitely my thing. And a theme song. What the hell is my theme song? So in this downtime, I actually got certified to teach bar. So I'm listening okay. to sort of like hard techno, which is really out of character for me. Um, I don't know, like something by Chris Melanchuk or something. Something okay. keep the energy going. Awesome. Awesome. I like it. Sorry, a little curveball just for no, fun. No, that's totally fine. <laughs> so uh, to, to the business at hand, if you will, um, really important from a business owner like yourself, um, what are you looking at in terms of um, employees, in terms of sustainability? We were just talking with Scott about that. Um, it's It's tough go. And I know that um, small business assistance through the government has been pretty ambiguous um, and opaque. And where does that put you guys? Yeah. Um, well, I have to say that the saddest day of probably my career as a business owner and not was um, saying goodbye to all of our employees. We employed about 35 people. Um, and on March 16th, 2020, we sent that terrible email to everybody that, um, you know, they no longer had a job and we weren't sure if they were going to be able to come back to work. Um, and in terms of government support, um, it has been a long and tedious road. Um, I've gotten a lot of help through PIBC. I have a very close friend who works um, with restaurants very closely there, who have sort of, who sort of like done a lot of hand holding throughout the okay. state process. Um, and then everybody knows how much of a disaster everything federal was. Um, mm -hmm. But we did manage to get support in both categories. So Good. that has definitely changed the game in terms of our trajectory moving forward. That's awesome. I mean, I, you hit the nail on the head. March 16th was a tough day for so many people. Yeah. Um, and it's one thing when you're protecting your family, your team, by letting someone go that's not up to snuff. But when it's your family, um, I, I think everyone out there feels it. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm just glad that it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There will be, I mean, whether that's vaccine, whether that's when things reopen, at least temporarily. Um, yeah. But hopefully you're able to sustain a little bit of a staff right now with to-go business and wine right sales now, and the like. Right now it's pretty much a family affair. We've got a okay. couple people back at house. It's me, it's my brother, it's my fiance. Um, mm -hmm. And aside from that, we're, we're looking, we'll see what happens. I know Kenny is really pushing to support us by way of outdoor seating sooner rather than later. We'll, we'll see what happens when he comes head to head with the state, because obviously that's not their plan of action. Um, but as soon as we're able to sort of start catering to, to people, sort of dining in, we'll be able to bring more people back. Right For now sure. we're only doing food on Fridays and Saturdays, so it's super, super limited. Um, yeah. It's um it, it will be interesting to see. I'm glad Kenny's pushing for that outdoor seating. Um yeah. and I my buddy in San Diego is telling me that they're um allowing alcohol uh consumption outside and huh. potentially because people aren't able to dine in and be six feet together. Um I saw some Burger King sombreros that they put together as well. Those might be yeah. fun to use. But um <laughs> regardless, um maybe that's another way and, and we'll see, we'll see how the situation develops. I think it's really interesting how quickly everything's changing and for all of us to stay on top of it, especially yourself as a business owner is got to be really challenging. Um, yeah. And I think what uh, PRLA.org Scott had turned me on to, that's been a really helpful tool for everyone. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. yeah. Um, keeps me up to date. I had no idea that we were opening so many counties in, in Pennsylvania for the 50% without that so yeah yeah they've definitely been really supportive throughout this entire ordeal yeah yeah um and then for yourself i mean words there's so many people out there and i think that's part of this that are in such a limbo land um in terms of i mean even myself for a while what's my next move who am i what do i do i mean I, i'm everyone's used to putting their nose to the grindstone and looking up when when vacation time comes or what is that um yeah. <laughs> so um people like yourself are an inspiration in that sense and you're still at it and you're persevering any uh any words of encouragement oh um yeah i mean there have been dark days and there have been brighter moments i think since all of this transpired or is transpiring around us um and i think that it's important to recognize that it's okay to sort of second guess what you're doing and it's okay to sort of reevaluate what makes sense for you and not every server and every bartender has to be, you know, wholeheartedly in love with what they do on a day to day, day, -to -day basis. And I think that this has also been a time of um, opportunity to sort of do some soul searching and 
mm -hmm. figure out what it is that actually makes you tick um, and get up in the morning. So I actually think this could be a positive thing for our industry. A lot of people, I'm, I'm included in this, get stuck in a rut, get up in the morning, you get to work way too early, you do a million things that you could probably piecemeal across a few days, but you want to bang it out right away. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's all consuming this industry at times and we work all the time. So having this time to sort of um, take a moment, sit down and kind of reevaluate what's important to you, whether it be related to work or, you know, just getting up in the morning, what you're eating for breakfast and if you're exercising, you know? Um, so that's what yeah. I would say to every single person out there um, in the restaurant business. You know, we love you. We'll always welcome you back with open arms, but don't, uh, don't be too hard on yourself right now. For sure. I, I think those were right on the mark. I mean, for myself as well, I, for the first time since high school, I have like a healthy uh, sleep schedule yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and being able to um, over a decade. Wow. I'm showing my age, um, <laughs> but being able to do that. And like you said, hone in on what really makes you tick. I mean, I'm, I have two sons and that's been huge for myself. Um, yeah. But also, I mean, at this point, the people who I talk to, are ch champing at the bit to get back to it. And I can't wait to make a cocktail for someone or to tell someone about a bottle of wine that gets me excited, um, yeah, which yeah. is why I'm doing some of these lives. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what she said. Oh, I'm horrible at this. But cool. I said, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I thought you said yeah. Kelly. I'm like, oh no, wait. <laughs> I said cool. me too, yeah. Rock on. Um, well, thank you so much for the time, Chloe. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks and, for doing that. Of course, of course. It's a, it's a pleasure. So um, we'll jump on to the next person, I guess. This is like still odd. Um, but let me know anything else before we sign off. No, I think. Cool. Yeah, rock and roll, everybody. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Badass. Bye. Okay. All right. We are zooming. Sweet. Um, making good time. I'm worried about the one hour time limit, just so everyone is aware. Um, I guess Instagram cuts you off when that happens. Um, Jill. All right. Let me see if I can invite Jill. I'm looking. Sorry, guys. Thanks for bearing with. Let's see. I don't see Jill here, um, which is fine. People are busy. So I, let's jump to the next one. Um, and then we'll get Jill on after Alex, you're up if you're ready. Oh, is she on? Oh, Jill. I'm sorry. Wait, canceling Alex. Jill, I see you. All right. Sorry. I don't know why. Jill, you might be able to request to join, um, because I am not even seeing your name on here to invite you right now. Weird. I'm looking for you, Jill. Um, I see you on the, on the comments. I just don't see you when I go to invite. There should be. Oh, okay. Yeah. As, as I uh, said, yeah, maybe. Okay. I can, I'll go to Alex, I'll come back, um, and Jill, maybe, like uh, I said, jump out and then jump back in. That might work um, to bring you back on. So, Alex, stop, start, juke, sorry, <laughs> um, inviting you, if that works. And, yes, hi, let's get some jams going. Okay. Let's see. Jill, I see that you jumped out, jumped back in. I feel like this is musical chairs. And thank you everyone for bearing with. No, you're not popping up on the request here. Um, hi, do you know if there's a way for her to ask to come on? I've seen that before. I, at the bottom, there's a, a text box and then a couple over, there's two smiley faces. That means that's the joining area. So I don't know if you can hit the smiley faces, if you have that. That's what I have here. There we go. Awesome. Got it. Yeah, I, I wish I had one handy. Um, and I have invited Jill or she. Success! Rock on! It's <laughs> real! I am so sorry. I was like, no, I'm here! I'm really here! <laughs> awesome. Awesome, I awesome. did but I wouldn't miss this. <laughs> <laughs> you rock. Well, thank you for bearing um, with, and I'm glad we worked that out. Um, 
completely. It's not part of the, the psalm repertoire yet. You know, <laughs> nobody taught me how to do live videos, unfortunately. <laughs> Didn't think that it would come to this. Exactly. <laughs> um, Who knew? Who knew? So I'm uh, really happy to have you here. I'm going to do the same with you. I hope cool. you have a theme song ready um, and tell us who you are. <laughs> okay, cool. I am Jill Davis, beverage director at Four Seasons Hotel Philadelphia. Um, I started at Four Seasons back in Florida, um, kind of traveled around, spent a few harvests in Napa and came here last December, so a year and a half ago, to do this opening, which is really fun to be in Philadelphia, um, albeit it's, there have been a lot of ups and downs in the past year and a half uh, with an opening and then a pausing, however you want to put it, um, of a hotel. But uh, so happy that you're doing this and hosting this and sort of Thank bringing you. the community together to have these chats about what's going on in, in our industry and how it's impacting us and how, you know, just it affects everybody. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. And theme song. You're not escaping oh, that. Oh, right. right. <laughs> um, so I don't have a specific song, but like, I have enough energy, so I'm going to go exactly opposite of Chloe. I, like, exude energy, so I've been bringing it back down with, like, background instrumental piano all week long. Okay. <laughs> Where like it's like, that. stop being so energetic. <laughs> I could use that sometimes. That yeah. sounds awesome. It's necessary. Um, it, <laughs> for sure. With, with Syrah, of course. No. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I actually, um, so I have to show you something I think is really cool. So I brought Please. it to show. I'm drinking boxed Ant Hill wine, what? which I think you would appreciate being that this Absolutely. is in the Skernick portfolio, I believe. Absolutely. Um, I, I have so not excited. seen the box version. Oh gosh. It's, it's four bottles in a box. It's like, it's the best thing in the world. Yeah. That is, that is. COVID style, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So it, one day I, I've told Jamie this before. Um, I want to probably come there and I'll ask you to decant that for me. Um, yes. The, Please do. The, the bag I would itself. just love to figure out that <laughs> Just to be obnoxious and have fun. <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to figure that out. I'll be thinking about that for a while. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I, to the business at hand, um, just wanted to chat about, I mean, for you, Scott, we already talked about his move to to-go um, and how that's been difficult. I think of you guys and I think of the pinnacle of, of dining and fine dining. Um, and I think of, of course, well-deserved. Um, and when it comes to tasting menus, uh, plating in um, ramekins um, yeah. for little amuse-bouches, I don't know how that works. So yeah, tell us. It's, <laughs> it's interesting when you switch to to-go. Um, you know, we've been doing three course to go meals, which is really fun and exciting. Um, and honestly, it's, it's really cool to let the like the chefs have really been taking it and like running with it creatively, which is great. Um, you know, we've had a Korean food meal, a Lebanese food meal. Um, you know, we've got a couple French chefs, so we get some good French food up in there. Um, and it's really cool to see what they can do when you like give them the ball to run with. Um, and honestly, they're doing an incredible job of putting it together. Um, so it all comes like pre-packaged and like you reheat it yourself and put it together yourself. But it comes with like all of the intricate garnishes that you would have at a restaurant. Obviously, you have to put it on the plate yourself. Um, but it's exciting to stay in touch with our guests and to have that interaction, albeit it's different. Um, it's been so good to connect with guests again and be like, hi, I miss you. So good to see you. I'm going to just put this in the back of your car. I promise I won't touch anything. <laughs> you know, it's, the service is different, but I think um, you can definitely create those finer touches um, within takeaway, within the guidelines that we're seeing for COVID, um, you know, how to act in a, in a restaurant and a hotel and everything. And it's difficult, it's challenging, but it's, you know, it's a fun puzzle. Like it's a wrench of something that we never thought we'd have to do, but, um, but that's part of the challenge and that's part of the, part of what we do. Right. Um, and, so for me, it's like more about that connection with the guest and continuing to take care of the guest in whatever form that is, whether it's takeaway or when we get back at it with all of the guidelines involved and taking care of them, not only, you know, through food, but also through our safety and our hygiene mm -hmm. and making sure that we are following the guidelines to the absolute best of our abilities, et cetera. 
yeah, yeah that's that's so. huge the safety aspect cannot be uh under yeah. appreciated um Completely. i think it's it's neat like you said and i, I think i saw vetri doing it as well with the uh, yeah. bringing dishes home and kind of reheating yeah. them and doing the finishing touches we've all seen food die in the window um yep. and we all know how it is with cocktails when i yep. was a bartender and how you know the ice no it's killing the cocktail yeah. no it's, uh, it's melting it's melting <laughs> Take it, run. Uh, Get it to the table now. <laughs> but but with that, I think um, it's neat that you are making sure that you're getting the highest quality product. Yes, there's a little For bit sure. of extra effort, but you're not like, all right, good luck. Um, yeah, well, and, and like we've got nicely printed out instructions of like, how are you putting this back together? How are you plating it? Um, our chefs have done some videos to, to show people how... Um, Talking of cocktails to go, I've done a couple of videos for our cocktails. Um, I don't think that we've posted them yet, but I'm sure that we will. Can't um, wait. <laughs> yeah, I actually, uh, I have one with me. We're doing like little eight ounces, which is great. Oh, awesome. It's just like a little bitty like juice bottle full of a martini, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, to your, to your point, like you have to stir it at home, but at least you get it made, like it's proper, right? Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's fun to have. I know that for the chefs, they had their creative outlet. Now I'm like, ooh, I can do wine pairings and cocktail pairings and we can make cocktails to go. So yeah, it's really exciting to see all of that happening and see Pennsylvania doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. great. Um, that's huge. I think uh, with what you were saying in terms of um, cocktails to go, I think, I don't know if everyone knows, you guys just won an award, which is really huge. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and I think when we chatted a bright spot in the middle of all this, um, yeah, for sure. it was like, so Departures Magazine named Sky High as one of like the best hotel bars in the world. And um, it was so good to have, like, like Chloe was saying, there's been ups and downs and there's been like bright moments. And that was definitely one of the bright moments where it was like, there was all this hard work. It didn't get lost in that. It did get, you know, it did get seen. So that was really exciting to see and to be able to share with the team, et cetera. Maybe the soundtrack changed that day a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The soundtrack <laughs> was definitely not piano that day. But you asked me about this week. That was last week. <laughs> Touche. Um, and, and finally, I think the other big thing is the finishing touches that you're mentioning with both the dishes and the cocktails. For sure. It probably gives people such an appreciation that people take for granted. Um, Hopefully. Oh, stirring a cocktail wow it's not just a spoon in a cocktail yeah. or yes plating is not it's a, it is a work of art yeah and also like you know we're doing the john george ginger margarita to go um and like talking about like taking your lime wedge and like wiping the rim so the ginger salt sticks like mm -hmm. i don't i i know that but i don't know that every guest would think of like how do i get this salt to stick to this rim why isn't it sticking you know um those little things that you pick up being in the industry it's it's fun to get to, to share those with, with guests. That's awesome. Well, I'll leave you to it. I, I really appreciate the time. Um, I of know course. you probably have service starting up and all that fun stuff or not tonight. We, uh, we, uh, we're doing it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. We do okay. Thursday through Saturday. Oh, neat. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Um, very cool. Well, thank awesome. you so much. Always a pleasure. And, uh, we'll thank chat you for soon. having me. Of awesome. course. Of course. Talk soon. Bye. All right, Alex. Uh, let's see. This should be good. A little smoother than the last transition. Okay. So, um, my soundtrack, if I had one, um, as we're buying time, um, would be, uh, oh, we're halfway there. I'm going to leave it there because I just butchered everyone's night. I'm sorry. I apologize. But, yes, I'm taking it back. Um, and hopefully Alex comes on to kill this awkward silence. Let's see. Um, also just to build on what Jill was saying about, uh, those videos and things, the personalized touch that you would get. All right. I'm glad I got a laugh. Thanks. Hi. Um, and, and some cries. Cool. <laughs> Thanks Mike. Um, so, uh, Alex, just I should have a little invitation and just hit accept if you can. Um, but yes, the uh, personalized touch. Um, I think that people it's so hard in restaurants. It's so fast paced um, to have those videos uh, are really, really neat. Um, so you can get to know the people serving you and, and the chefs that much better. Um, you're not seeing the invite. Let me try again. I'm sorry. 
uh, Alex add. Okay. So it should have sent it to you. We'll see. And if not, um, I think what worked for Jill as well was going on the bottom. Uh, and there's two faces. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said I jump out, jump back in, and then I'll re-enter the request. Oh, wait. I see something. Let's see what I can do. Requests. Awesome. I saw your request, Alex. And for some reason, it didn't load you on. Um, there we go. Should work. Maybe uh, Instagram is mad because there's so many guests. There we go. Nice. Hi. Hey, thanks for coming tonight um, and course. joining in. Um, so same, same drill as everyone else. Um, who are you? Uh, what do you do for a, a profession for fun? And then um, a theme song of the week, the past week. Okay. So um, uh, before this, I worked as uh, the beverage manager at the Love Restaurant in Rittenhouse, um, which I hope to do when, uh, when this is over. Um, in the meantime, I've been working as a Pennsylvania wines ambassador, doing a lot of work with uh, the Pennsylvania Winery Association, which has been pretty fun. Um, and then a theme song. I don't know. I've been listening to a lot of like 80s pop, okay. which is upbeat I love it. and kind of fun. I don't know. I don't have a specific song now. I automatically went to Cindy Lauper in my head. So that works. Oh, yeah, that's I like good. it. Um, but uh, <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> Love that you're still doing your stuff with the, the PA ambassador for PA Wines. Um, and I was out at Wayvine yesterday, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I think something very relevant with the PLCB shutting down. Um, are you hearing from wineries that they're getting a surge in business um, or had a surge in business for a while now that the PLCB is reopening? Um, and how is it affecting PLC, uh, PA wineries in terms of staffing and protocols and such? So from the people I've spoken with, there was a huge surge in sales, especially when, um, you know, the PLCB was shut down. A lot of places like De Bruno Brothers and kind of the small wine shops and places like that couldn't buy more wine. So they looked at Pennsylvania wines. And that's great. It was a great way to kind of put these wines in front of people who maybe hadn't had them before and to make these wines available. And a lot of wineries sold a lot of things that way. Um, but there's also been a, a huge surge in curbside pickup and in uh, shipping for the wineries that can ship and for delivery for some of the wineries that are actually delivering door to door, like Wayvine's doing that, uh, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool. And I think is a huge way for them to be pivoting, to be able to be really successful. So a lot of people that I've spoken with, they're way up over last year, or at least they were up until That's the point awesome. where the PLCB reopened. I don't, I'm assuming purchasing at least from like a, a restaurant and retail side. Um, but I think that, I hope that a lot of people have found new favorites and new wines that they will go back to after this, after this time is over. You know, they, they may have found, you know, inexpensive wines from Europe that they really like, but they're also finding Pennsylvania wines that they can hang on to and still drink when this is over. So I hope that's what's coming out of this. I know that sales are up tremendously and hopefully they continue to be up. No doubt. Yeah, I, I have a couple favorites now, which is awesome. And I think it's a silver lining. I mean, that's what we keep trying to think about is what what are we going to see in terms of the business when this all shakes out? Um, what will restaurants look like? How many restaurants will reopen? Um, and I think something that's absolutely heartening is that these Pennsylvania wineries that have been unheralded for so long and overlooked a lot, um, that's great to hear that business soared for that long, um, for a couple months at least, and, and hopefully that, that stays. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But we'll uh, see any, yeah, so I mentioned Wayvine. Any other PA wineries that you think people should keep their eyes on? Oh, there's so many. Um, I mean, if you want to drive out to a winery to pick something up, I think Vala does a really great job. Um, Galen Glen is one of my personal favorites, and they ship, which is great. Oh, awesome. um, and those wines are really summer friendly. They have a lot of uh, whites, and they do a sparkling rosé and a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Um, there's, I could probably name like a hundred wineries that we could, we, that people could be buying from. Basically, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, anywhere yeah. in Pennsylvania, you are, you know, within 
30 miles, 40 miles of a winery and you can get something, you know, Chad's Ford is doing really wonderful things and they're pretty close to the city. Um, Penn's Woods is pretty great right now. Uh, Caramore, if, if you like kind of bigger, heavier oak, oak style wines, if you want to be reminded of California, but you're here in Pennsylvania. Um, there's so many fun things happening in the Lehigh Valley up by, by Galen Glen. Um, you know, there's, there's so many things and once, once everything reopens, there's all of these great wine trails you can go on and kind of all of these great kind of tourism things. So like Lehigh Valley has a wine trail that you can go winery to winery to winery to winery. And they had to cancel. Uh, they have this great ticketed event that they do in, I think it's in March every year. And they had to cancel it this year due to the coronavirus. But basically you go winery to winery oh, and you wow. get like a little stamp that says you've been to the winery and there's special wines to taste and special food pairings and all of that. And it's, it's really, really cool. Um, and I would recommend it for next year when they start it up again. But um, it's a great way to kind of see the different wineries and taste all sorts of different things that you maybe haven't had before. Because we grow a lot of grapes that are a little bit obscure, um, in addition to the grapes that you've heard of. And there's a lot of really fun things happening that, you know, I didn't think to try until I was in some of the wineries and you're tasting through everything. And you're like, wow, this is really cool. I had no idea what Traminette was or Chambersan mm -hmm. or anything you know like that. And you taste these wines and you're like, wow, this is really cool. And it's not terribly expensive and it's really food friendly. Um, and it's nice to support local. It's nice to support the, you know, to be able to go to the winery and talk to the actual winemakers um, and find yourself in the vineyard really easily. So that's pretty great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think to piggyback on what you said, there's so many cool uh, varietals that we have here. And at the same time, I know there's people who have been hesitant to go and try PA wineries because they think it's all Norton or Chambersen. But um, hey, you can have Chardonnay while your friends try something cool. Um, yeah. We definitely have that. So very cool. Alex, I really appreciate it. I, I, um, I hope that this stays like you said, and I hope that uh, people really, I mean, take a second look if they haven't before at Pennsylvania wines um, and especially now. So I hope so. thank There's you so, so much. many good things. Thank you for having there me. There are. Of course. Always great to see you. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. All right. So um, now it's time for someone who I am very, very lucky to know um, and have been lucky to work for um, work with, uh, Drink all the Chardonnay. Yes, sorry, I see the comments. Marielle, it's good to see you. Hey. I uh, clicked the link pretty quickly. <laughs> you did. That was so seamless. How's it going? Um, so tell us who you are. <laughs> it's going well. Thanks for asking. Um, tell us who you are, uh, what you do, and a theme song for the last week. Sure. Uh, can you hear me okay? It's like breaking up a little bit for me. It's breaking up, but I hear it when you're talking for the, for the important parts. Okay. I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> I'll push through it then. Um, I, my name is Mario Wiga. I'm the Pennsylvania sales manager for Skernick Wines. Um, and before that, I've been doing that for about three years. Before that, I was in restaurants. Um, most recently, the wine director at A Kitchen in uh, Rittenhouse Square. Um, before that, I dabbled in some retail at Moore Brothers in New Jersey, and I got my start at Tria. Um, and so I've been in the Philadelphia wine scene for at least a decade now at this point, showing my age as well, Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as long as it's not just me, but uh, theme song, I'm going to hold you to it. Theme song. All right. Well, don't. This is not my theme song, but this is the song that's been stuck in my head for the last, well, 24 hours at least. Um, if you're familiar with Music Together, um, which my son is doing uh, virtually right now, there's this song, um, which I will not sing, but it's, uh, it goes something like, Everyone Find a Lap. And so that's been rolling through my head for the last 24 hours. So, uh, yeah, I can't think of any other song right now. <laughs> No, I don't blame you. I, I finally have kicked Baby Shark out of my head. So that was a, a success. That was a big victory. Um, so Ugh, I, yeah, it's the same idea. 
<laughs> um, we'll get to it. So uh, being on the distribution side of things um, and the shutdown um, was very, very difficult, as everyone knows. Um, you were unable to get product to, um, as Alex said, uh, De Bruno Brothers looking for wines and, and they can't replenish all those places with WEPs um, trying to find product. Um, what, how did you deal with that? Tell us a little bit more about it. Um, and yeah expand if you'd like yeah uh the the, the uh, shutdown the plcb shutdown had a pretty dramatic effect on our business um with the way that the system works by the plcb shutting down that really just our business came to a complete halt we couldn't sell to them because their stores were closed we also couldn't sell to restaurants and these bottle shops like de Bruno brothers and bloomsday cafe and uh, 320 a cafe who were existing and deemed essential by the government. Um, and we were essential as well, but because our, we have to sell through the PLCB currently, the wine rests at the PLCB stores. Uh, we were just out of luck. There was, there was a, there was no way to restock our customers um, and, and help them with their businesses. But if I may get on my, high horse about what I think would improve the situation. It's direct delivery Please. Uh, from distributors to, uh, to directly to retailers, uh, bottle shops, groceries, uh, restaurants. Um, that would have changed the game. We would have been able to take, uh, we would have been able to deliver to them, stay in business, and they would also have been able to keep operating, keep stocking um, the wines that they love. So that would, would have been a really great thing. Luckily, while this was all happening, um, some, some folks uh, stepped up for the industry, um, led by Jason Malumet of MFW and uh, John Livingston. I saw him on here of A6 Wines um, and, and Zach Morris of Bloomsday Cafe. They, uh, they took on the PLCB, and the judge ruled that uh, the PLCB should be compelled to implement direct delivery. So this will, be, this will be huge. It hasn't happened yet. The PLCB appealed, of course. Um, but I am very hopeful for the implications of this down the road. Absolutely. I'm, I'm humbled by, I mean, yourself, but Jason and, and everyone who's pushed this forward. Um, and it was a, a law as of what, 2016, that it was supposed to be implemented uh, direct delivery, and it just sat on someone's desk and collected dust. Absolutely. The last three years, uh, this, this should have been implemented in 2017. And here we are. Imagine how different our experience of, uh, of this pandemic would be. And going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then with that, uh, all of us have, have seen a change in terms of distributors and layoffs and things of that nature. Um, and there are certain ones that are smaller that are struggling. Um, and with that, what I worry about um, is, you know, downsizing in terms of selection um, going towards uh, just in the, on the store shelves. Clearly, PLCB selects what they'd like. Um, and, uh, if people aren't bringing it into the state, how do you have that wide of a selection? But, um, is there a silver lining there that you're seeing? Is that uh, WEPs potentially? Yeah. Um, I am seeing a lot more people get the, uh, the wine expanded permits, the WEPs, um, which is great. I think it's a lifeline right now. Um, Scott touched on that earlier. Uh, I, if you're able to, I mean, it still costs, unless I heard a rumor that they were um, going to discount it, but as, as of, as far as I know, it's still $2,000 up front to purchase a WEP and then um, annually 2% of sales. So it's not nothing, but um, it could be, as you said earlier, the way to pivot uh, during this time. And, and I'm going to agree that it's the way towards the future because we don't know how long uh, this is going to last the limitations on how restaurants operate I think it's um, something that a lot of uh, restaurants should consider uh, investing in if they're able to 
Absolutely. Like you said, it's not cheap. And then plus, I think it's like 600 bucks a year to renew the license and all that. But with that, um, how Alex was saying, you know, that was kind of the silver lining with Pennsylvania wines. Um, potentially that silver lining, although everyone's struggling, what is it under pressure? That's how you form diamonds. Um, if people become disenchanted with the PLCB <laughs> and they end up going to these uh, retail shops, these new WEPs or, or ones that are existing, um, potentially we'll see that that selection expand and the passion be there um and and don't get me wrong there are some people with the plcb who i i love and i know you you as well but um it's interesting to see how everything's evolving yeah absolutely i mean i think in the short term we've definitely seen a reduction in selection in pennsylvania because of uh as i think it was scott earlier said uh there's not true wholesale pricing for restaurants um, and bottle shops. Uh, there's, there's a, I, and I, I, just to go back to direct delivery, I think we could take a, a nice chunk out of the fees and taxes there um, that would help reduce the pricing for um, restaurants. And, and, you know, if we can bring the bottle costs down. The consumers um, will also be paying less and hopefully we'll all be selling more in that way. Um, and I think it's just the first step towards some real change in Pennsylvania. And eventually, that is how we get, we, we broaden our selection here, right? Absolutely. And get uh, four or five liter bags of Ant Hill Farms. I can't wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's right. I know. I didn't even know about those. I need to find that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, awesome. Well, any uh, parting words, anything else, words of wisdom for people who are out there and, and waiting for this pressure to really develop um, something beautiful? I mean, just keep supporting your favorite restaurants and bottle shops. Um, they need the love. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of great wine out there in, in Pennsylvania. Um, I mean, support, support local too. Support the, the Pennsylvania wines. Um, do everything you can. Drink more wine, fermented grape juice. It's great. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. At the end of the day. Cool. Well, Marielle, thank you. It's always, always a pleasure. Um, and we'll chat soon, I'm sure. Good chatting with you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. And last but certainly, certainly not least, um, we have Hi. Uh, I know he's here. We'll see if I can, if I can invite him. Oh, he was number two on the list as I'm going through. Awesome. Um, hey, hey. Good to see you, man. All right, anyways. There we go. Bad. There Let's we go. Into the, into the meat of it all. <laughs> into the nitty gritty. Well, um, I, I don't say this lightly. I say this with the weight that it deserves. Um, you are a keystone in this industry when it comes to Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and um, someone who I am really, really stoked to know and lucky to know. Um, whenever you're at a tasting, whatever – whichever company it might be for an industry tasting you're there you're asking questions you're chatting with everyone um and this is no different you and i had started talking about this and, and here we are today um but with that with the glue and the silver linings um i think about uh, your instagram stories on a daily basis um and every single day you're sharing all of this content um, and that's one of the really beautiful things of, about this time is there's all this free content available um, and it's almost leveling the playing field. I mean, for two weeks straight, I was listening to Rajat Parr talk about wine like, wow, I never get that privilege. Um, and Philly is not the biggest market, uh, but it's getting there. But I feel like even in small markets in Tennessee and um, all over it, North Carolina, I mean, I think about where you're coming from. Um, people are getting access to stuff. Do you see that uh, continuing? And, and what are your thoughts? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm offended at you asking me what my theme song was, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, ah! I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you later. You, it's you okay. played it. You played it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was just background music. But um, so uh, first and foremost, I mean, I think it's funny that you call me the glue or anything. I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm relatively new to the, the Philly wine scene and so forth. But, you know, it's always been important to me wherever I worked and wherever I'm part of that. I'm part of the community in some way because I think it's important to know the people that you're around. Uh, and I'm very proud to, to be on this panel with, like, some really amazing professionals and personalities 
Um, so thank you to, you know, to, to Scott, Chloe, you know, Marielle, uh, Alex, and Jill for taking the time to even just talk, you know, and, and be a part of this, you know. And when you had asked me to do this, I, I immediately thought, I was like, I, I don't want to do it by myself. I, I want to have other people involved because I, I think that it's important to hear a lot of different voices. And um, uh, we all have a lot of different perspectives and things that to share. And I think um, that's why it's important to me to, you know, just to, to be, be out there and be vocal and, and support people, you know. Like, in, what, what would they say, you know, like, you know, the rising tide raises raises all boats. And I think, you know, that's, that's very much true, you know, so like, you know, one person's success is everybody's success in that regards. Um, in regards to, you know, us being a small market, uh, I, don't, I think we have potential to be a, just as big of a market as, you know, New York, San Francisco and so forth. We just obviously have a, a major obstacle that obviously a, a few of our peers are really kind of helping um, knock down a little bit uh, and put, put us on, on a fair playing field that will make us, you know, uh, on evil, even playing field with those other large markets. Um, but I know there's a lot of wine lovers out there. A lot of them are on this IG live right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so, um, but, you know, when everything shut down, so forth, you know, I was kind of at a point where I was like, you know, what what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to keep myself going? Um, and, you know, to answer your theme song thing, my, my theme song and the thing that I've always gone through, like, you know, MS theory and so on and so forth and, and all of my different studies you know, it was a, it was a little hip hop classic by the Young Guns called "Can't Stop, Won't Stop." Uh, just because the records, baby, we exactly. get down. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's always been my, kind of like my mantra, if you will. You know that I just, you know, like I can't stop, won't stop, won't let something hold me back. You know, whether it be, you know, you know, failure or whether it be, you know, COVID nineteen. Um, and so I try to make the most out of, out of my time. You know, obviously, some of y'all know. You know, I have a, a newborn son. And um, that's been kind of a, the biggest thing that's been kind of circling in my life at the moment. But, you know, in between, you know, diaper changes and feedings and so forth, I try to, you know, fill it up as much as I can and make most of this free time that we do have. Um, so, yeah. Um, and like you were mentioning, you know, I think it really has, you know, the way that the community has come up, the way the community has kind of rose to the challenge has uh, really closed the gap for a lot of us. Um, whether it be, be in a large market or small market, being able to listen to these different you know, podcasts. You know, this morning, I, you know, I spent the morning starting off in Chile and then all of a sudden I traveled to, you know, uh, to New Zealand and listened to, you know, a few other of my favorite producers talk and then went over to Italy and then ended up in, you know, in, in Burgundy uh, with, uh, um, with Thibaut uh, Clergé. Uh, and that was just a really cool experience, you know, to know that, you know, in, in the span of like, you know, four hours, I was able to travel around the world and talk to some of my favorite producers, ask questions, hear what they have to say, an experience that you really don't get, you know, in the normal world, if you will. Um, and I hope that, you know, when this is all over, that those type of opportunities will continue because it does help, you know, if, you know, I'm thinking about my peers back in like North Carolina, you know, where it's a much smaller market and so forth, or like, you know, uh, you know, I had no Psalms are in Idaho and Montana and so forth, and they don't get the opportunities that a lot of the other Psalms in large markets like we do. And um, I think it's, it's great that people are doing things to help, bring um, it and make it more accessible, you know, and that's kind of one of the great things. One of the, one of the silver linings of all this is that, you know, with our technology and with um, uh, people's time and willingness to, to kind of share, it's helped open a lot of doors. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I love that you had a Philly uh, group for your theme song, um, <laughs> but uh, awesome. Yeah. I, I think, and and you know i've been asking you on a daily basis all right what are we watching what's going on uh -huh. um and i think that's also one of the important things about having this as as an instagram live as opposed to a zoom for right now because people can go back people have lives you have a son it's tough sometimes to break away um and uh or or know that someone's unmuting you if you will um, on a <laughs> zoom <laughs> no, i mean I, I like ig live because it's just i can see a lot of like live reactions right now people are commenting i think that, like being able to connect to people i think the point of this whole uh, you know conversation that we're having this whole forum if you will was to be able to connect to the people um to the masses to to our community to philly as a whole and being able to see these live reactions was sort of definitely makes sense thing you know seeing as chloe was talking people were pumping up and getting jazzed up and excited you know seeing all these little hearts floating up in the air by the way i don't see enough hearts floating anyways just show <laughs> um but you know seeing those, I mean, it's, it's, it's being able to see those live reactions definitely is, is quite nice and um it helps, you know, in terms of, you know, really, thank you, thank you. It helps really kind of uh, <laughs> fuel that for, for our conversations, so, yeah. No doubt. And uh, I think what, what the best resources right now for permanent-ish resources, 67 Palm Mall, you turned me on to. Um, 
I heard Peter Lean break down champagne, the best breakdown besides yeah. maybe Gabe Clary um, that I've gotten before my career, which was yeah. really, really neat. Um, yeah. And I, I'm bummed I missed the Clerge. Um, I hope I can find that somewhere online. I'll be asking you where to find that because um, Tebow's a, a legend before they even before he's even gotten his, his feet wet. Um, yeah, before he's going to turn 30. That's crazy. Yeah. He's yeah. a young book and he's doing amazing things. Um, but yeah, yeah, six seven Paul Mall is great. Uh, Winebo is doing some really amazing uh, things with the uh, two master psalms, um, you know, with, with Jesse Becker and, and Ron Edwards. Uh, they're putting together a really amazing series that they're putting on every week uh, on at Wednesday at around four o'clock right beforehand. Um, and you just really, you know, um, and if you keep on looking, you can definitely find things. You know, there's for example, like Wines in New Zealand is doing a, a, a great seminar series. Um, Wosa is putting out some really great uh, uh, wines of South Africa is doing really great things of putting out information out there um, <laughs> hey Chris uh, so what am I drinking right now um, right now I'm drinking water but you know throughout the, this COVID I mean I've been exploring different wines uh, drinking a lot of craft beer and so on and so forth um, and it's kind of like the, 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 way, the way to go I mean um, I, I, kind of, I, I kind of have daddy <laughs> no no not there's, there's no such thing as steam um, but <laughs> But, um, but yeah, it's just kind of, um, you know, I have daddy do, so I, I can't, 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 can't get too slosh, you know, I, I don't have that, that single life anymore. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, if you keep on searching, you can definitely find some really cool other, other, whether it be podcasts, whether it be other, uh, zoom or other like IG lives and so forth. Um, it's just whether you're willing to go out and look for there, you know, and of course, yeah, follow on Instagram if you want to see what's going on mm -hmm. and, and so so I'll try to post as much as I can. Um, but it, I think, and also I think, if you, you reach know, out to um, Harmon Skernick, I, yeah. he's been sending out invites to some really yeah. great um, Zoom sessions as well. But yeah. I think the, the other big thing that I wanted to touch on with you um, in terms of uh, certifications, um, I think you had mentioned Psalms in Idaho. It's very tough for them to um, have a mentor. Uh, I know I've run programs in certain areas where I'm just like, how do I, what's my next step? And I've sought out a mentor at a lower level um, so that I can learn. And yeah. this, hopefully we can see more people go through the right people, uh, deserving people go through the CMS and, and get to where they, they deserve to be. Um, do you think that's more possible now with all this? No, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, totally. I mean, but it's also up to you too, you know, cause, uh, when I was in North Carolina, obviously, you know, they, we were quite limited in resources. So I had to go out and, and find, you know, some people either to study with or to other people to mentor me and so forth. Um, and I never forgot that, you know, so that's why, you know, whenever the opportunity presents and I'm able to do it, I'm going to do my best to, to help out the community in any way I can, whether it be you're in Philly, whether it be you're in New York, whether it be you're in Idaho, you know, or, or Texas or Montana or Oklahoma or wherever, you know, um, I'll, I'll do my best, you know, to, to help out in the community in any ways. And I think that's the most important thing. And that's one of the best things about our community. And the one thing I missed most about our community is that that pay for it mentality, you know, that we're willing to help each other. We're willing to have it, but you know, sometimes you have to ask for help, you know, because mm -hmm. we're not all mind readers, you know, and so forth. And you know, um, we don't buy, we don't bite, don't be shy. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so <laughs> don't don't be, you know, if you want help in something, you want to learn about something, you know, don't be afraid to ask. You know, the majority of us in in this industry are are open and willing to help, so long as you're not an a hole or some jerk, you know. So so don't be a jerk about it. Be appreciative, you know. Be humble. And, you know, that, that will take you far in this business. Awesome. I, I think you should have finished that with hashtag get some. Yeah, little hashtag get some. Um. Hashtag <laughs> pump the jams. You know, all that stuff, you know. The, the reason why the, the, the big pump of the jams is a big thing is that used to be like kind of like my rally cry at, at, in the pre-shift. You know, I used to go, you know, I really miss saying it is, you know, uh, let's do it to it, pump up the jams, you know. And that always got, you know, myself hyped up. And I would think that I got, I got my staff hyped up too. So, you know, as we, as we continue to go through this, you know, just – Keep that in mind, you know, let's just do it too and pump up the jams. Yeah. Well, this is winding down. I think um, just to finish off for everyone, thank you guys for watching. Um, keep your chins up. There is uh, a service. Uh, there's going to be a pre-shift at some point. Um, we'll pump up the jams and yeah, we'll man. do it together. We'll get through it together. And there What's is that? for sure a silver lining and a bright, bright horizon on the future. So yeah. we'll cool. get those together and we'll just come up bigger and stronger. So no doubt. Let's do it. Rock on. All right. Thank you. Right, thanks, everyone. Hamilton. Thanks. Hi. Appreciate it. Thanks for everyone for listening. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll put out some more fun stuff soon. Heck yeah. All right. Take care, everyone.